Today, we cover the coffee man that is Sojiro Sakura from Persona 5 Royal. Simply known as boss to the fan thieves, he's the legal guardian to Futaba and was quite something back in the day. With that, here are my reasons why Sojiro Sakura is dad material. Spoilers for the plot of Persona 5 Royal. Our first encounter with Sojiro takes place along the small streets of Yongen Jaya, where we can find our hero lost and all over the place. Eventually, he ends up at a back alley cafe called Le Blanc. As we enter the door, we can find Sojiro sitting next to a pair of free load, I mean customers. We'll be going now, the payment's on the table. Thanks for coming. Oh, four hours for just a single cup of joe. He ends up showing us to our room and isn't afraid to lay the ground rules. It's on you to clean up the rest. I'll be leaving after I lock up each day. You'll be alone at night, but don't do anything stupid. I'll throw you out if you cause any trouble. Anyway, the room he provided us is actually pretty big, and with a little cleaning, becomes the perfect hideout for the eventual fan of thieves. Despite not getting many customers, LeBlanc is well known for serving great coffee and is home to a wide range of personalities. As we continue to help out around the store, Sojir eventually teaches us his signature way of preparing coffee, ensuring us that we'll get kicked out if we serve a bad one. Another thing LeBlanc is well known for is their signature curry dish, which was once featured in a magazine. Eventually, Sojir teaches us the recipe, and Yusuke and Ryuji were the first test subjects. I want more, I can take it, it burns so good! This spiciness ignites the fire of creativity. Safe to say, they loved it. Pretty much everyone that has tried the curry absolutely loves it. But in the case of Futaba, she's downright addicted to this stuff. During our first day of school, Sojiro was kind enough to drive us there, where we learned that he's a bit of a player. <sighs> Men aren't usually allowed in my passenger seat. Now, when it comes to the ladies, Sojiro is as charming as they come. Anchan, huh? It's a nice name. You got a boyfriend? Hmm. Is that a new face I see? It's nice to meet you. My name is Makoto Nijima. A student council president, eh? I'm stunned. I hope he's not causing you too much trouble. I'm Sojiro Sakura, but everyone just calls me boss. Hey, what's going on here? You brought over another girl? And don't forget his famous nostalgia during Valentine's Day. Don't you have anything exciting happening? I mean, you've been here nearly a whole year. You know, when I was young, ooh boy. <laughs> By now, everyone knows what happens when you date more than one girl. Hey, what did you do? Outside the store, is that... I saw the light on in here last night. Did you think you'd just try and trick this romantically impaired fool? You could have just said you were busy, even if you had to lie about what you were doing. I came to say hello yesterday. But when I looked in the window, you were with someone else. You dick! Despite the dessert beating, Sojiro covered for us, saving our relationships. Cheer up. Here, have this. Nice. What a pain, though. I had to come up with this whole web of lies for you. I was having him help out at the store. I didn't realize it was Valentine's Day. Don't worry, he always talks about you. You're his one and only. That was enough to get you off the hook for now. But make sure your story matches mine, got it? Fast forward to a month later, we totally forget about White Day. Fortunately, Sojiro shares with us his dating secrets. Whoa, the Chief has an ultimate date plan? I better listen in too, just in case. First off, you're gonna need a gift. This won't work without one. Can't go wrong with flowers. Just make sure you buy them before the date. You gotta present them near the end. Surprise her. So you can't let her see you buying them on the date. Got it? Next, think about where you're taking her. You gotta want somewhere with the right atmosphere, but it's gotta be peaceful. Now, once the date part's over, you gotta take her out to dinner. Somewhere nice, too. But it's kinda last minute to make reservations. All the fancy places get booked pretty fast around White Day. <sighs> Damn it. I don't usually do this, but... I know a place. Can't guarantee anything. I bet they're full up too. But you might get an edge if you mention my name. So once you're at dinner, you get to talking, enjoying yourselves, that's when you give it to her. That ought to do it. Just follow the plan and you're safe. That very evening, we phoned in a reservation. I'm sorry, sir, but I'm afraid we're fully booked for tomorrow. You're a friend of Mr. Sakura's? My apologies, sir. If you could just hold for one moment. Thank you for your patience. You wanted a dinner course for two on the 14th. We will have a table ready for you. Dang, the chief has serious clout. 
The very next day, we get treated to a romantic date with our chosen waifu, and eventually ending with a bang, just as Sojuro instructed. Huh? Looks like something's happening. Oh, it's gorgeous! What? Thank you so much! I never saw this coming, but I'm so, so happy. Early in the story, Sojuro is actually really tough on us, almost like he doesn't want us around. I've got to report to your probation officer twice a month. It's already a pain in the ass as is, so please don't make me have to write even more crap. The last thing we need is more idiots like you roaming around. But when pressed for answers by Yusuke... I may be overstepping my bounds, but why did you decide to take him in? My reason, huh? <laughs> Probably because he reminds me of my old self. By the end of his confidant, Sojiro seems a little more open to the idea of dating Futaba. Oh, and uh, could you not, uh, you know, get with Futaba? I can't imagine you calling me father. Although, maybe it wouldn't be so bad. What are you two talking about? Nothing. But that doesn't stop him from being his natural protective self. Yo. Still working? Well, don't get wrapped up in the mood, you hear? Despite being a foster parent, he certainly treats her like his own and knows all of her habits. Like when the crew successfully stole Futaba's heart, the physical toll of the change seemed too much for her. In their panic, they even called in Dr. Takemi, but Sojuro knew better. Hmm? Well, why do you guys look so down? Futaba-chan's condition. What, this? It happens every so often. She must have used up all her energy. It's like she ran out of batteries. I think it happens because she doesn't get enough exercise. The main struggles of Sojiro's confidant stems from his questioned custody of Futaba. As I've mentioned, he's very protective and at first got really defensive at the mention of his daughter's name, which is completely natural considering he has the likes of Futaba's abusive uncle and even Sainijima breathing down his neck. The Fanatis did take action to solve these, but by then, child services had already been called in. Sojiro did nothing wrong! Futaba! I want to stay right here, stay with him! I'm happy! I don't want to live anywhere else except with my dad! One of Sojiro's best traits is his incredible generosity. Right after Futaba's change of heart, he gave the crew a whole set of tickets to the Tokyo Sky Tower, making for some wonderful memories. Then as a way to celebrate Futaba's recovery, he took them all out for some fancy sushi, which may have been a little out of the budget. 120,000 yen? <laughs> You're joking, right? Eventually, Sojiro does find out about their fan of thief identities. And don't worry, it's not because of Ryuji. At first he was real angry about the whole thing, but then it becomes cool once we explain it all. Compared to most adults, Sojiro is quite understanding and seems to not question strange things. We even expose him to the twins, where he doesn't seem too bothered by them. Well, at least they enjoy this curry. Through a little bit of miscommunication, they for some reason dubbed Sojiro as some kind of god killer, which we all know he is. It's safe to say that Sojiro's loyalty to the crew is boundless. Even at the threat of being arrested, he refused to give up the fan of these. As we fast forward to the story of Persona 5 Strikers, the crew needed a way to leave town without alerting the authorities. And Sojiro being the man came through for them. Hey, you guys still together? Then come on outside. Check out your wheels. Hmm. You sure you kids gonna be okay on your own? We'll be fine. I mean, probably. So what do you think about Sojiro? Will you consider moving in with him? Be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment on Sojiro Sakura, our favorite curry-making coffee master.